Okay, so here's a uh, the first wing rib that I've made for the plane. This is the nose rib. I need to make 12 of these. Uh, there's six right-handed versions and six left-handed versions. Uh, in order to make this, um, the very first thing you do, of course, is make a uh, form block. And what I did with anything that I had more than, say, four or five pieces that are identical to make, I actually made a cutting template to use with my router. So here we have the nose rib cutting block and there's actually two of these that are cut identical. I sandwich rough cut aluminum through them and then use a flush cut bit on my router to trim them flush with the cutting block and that makes every piece turn out identically. So the forming block is the part that goes inside the rib blank and you hammer the part around the form block. And I apologize for the lighting. I don't have good lighting here in the garage. So you have all these crimping uh, areas and the form block itself is actually beveled slightly so that you get your proper spring back on your aluminum after you hammer it into place. Well, when you lay this out using the coordinates on the blueprints here, uh, you cut this to shape, sand it down, bevel it, and then put the relief cuts in here. The two tooling holes used uh, quarter inch bolts to clamp everything together and you have to make a right and left handed version of this. So you make two of these the same size, then you bevel them uh, one way and bevel it the other way and then add the relief cuts. After that you can lay it out onto another block of wood and you have to add your flanges down here which give you the material to bend over the form block. It's kind of a bit of trial and error because you have to make sure that you only have just a little bit of extra material around the nose so that you can get your proper three millimeter radius around the nose and then as that starts to increase you have to put your flutes in the metal. Now one of the things this actually turned out pretty well I'm going to revise the form block a little bit and cut slightly deeper relief flutes in the form block so I can draw the metal down a little bit tighter into them. Uh, I noticed that I had uh, just not quite enough depth on those relief cuts when I was first forming this rib. Uh, in addition down here I had a little trouble you can't really see it very well but I had a little trouble getting that to draw down nice and smooth. There's just a bit of a wrinkle there. Now this is all structurally okay. There's no problem with the using this rib, um, but it's just not quite where I want it. I will use this rib, but I'll I, I'll want to revise the cutting template. Now the only thing about this rib that I really wasn't happy with is the top flange. You can kind of see here against the uh, page how the very top of the flange. So this part right here is a little shorter than the uh, back flange that bolts against the wing spar. There's about a two millimeter difference between the two of them. Now the plans call for the flange itself to be 18 millimeters once you've formed it. So every flange, uh, the back flange and the bottom flange, um, and with the exception of the taper for where it goes around the nose, that's all 18 millimeters it expands back out to 18 millimeters here uh, but then it starts to slightly taper into about 16 millimeters here and there's plenty of material there but I, I want it to be a little closer to the tolerances so what I'm going to do is I've taken my old form block and I've laid it out on a new piece of wood I'm gonna cut this is the top flange here what I'm doing is I'm expanding that taper back up to where I want it to be. So this is just a simple trace line here and what I've done is taken my flexible straight edge uh, right here and then just added a couple millimeters towards the back and then tapered it back down to where it needs to start at. And then I'll, of course I'll need to cut two identical versions of this. The reason this uh, original rib uh, turned out the way it did with the uh, not enough material up here on the form block or cutting block is because when I was sanding it uh, I went past the line essentially I went a little too far when I was sanding just this upper edge as I was tapering this and uh, that's how that ended up being short my measurements were all good everything was laid out properly but I just went a little too far 
you have a few test pieces and you have a few experiments to do before uh, you have a acceptable part. Again, this part's acceptable. It lays flat. It's structurally rigid. It's it's got enough material that I can I can do it. But since I am making eleven more of these, it's just as fine. I've got the scrap wood to uh, alter the cutting block just slightly uh, to get that extra flange material that I need. One other thing I'd like to point out as a tip is when you are drilling these locating holes or tooling holes in your plans, it's very important to drill perpendicular to the material that. Uh, the wood block or if you're using MDF or nylon or whatever it's very important to drill perpendicular to these and furthermore if you're making cutting blocks you need all of these tooling holes to line up identically you now if you just measure where the holes are located you're going to be off on every one of them after you drill it so the best thing to do is to get your first one located and then you stack up four sections of wood or two sections if you're only making four form blocks but four if you're doing cutting templates and you drill them in a drill press all at the same time, perfectly perpendicular, so they all have the same exact location on the holes. That way, when you've got your material clamped in here for cutting, and you drill your locating holes through these pilots, you clamp it down, you cut it on the router, you pop it out of here, you can then transfer it to your form block, which has identically located holes, so that you don't buckle the material or you don't have a wavy because uh, the material, if the holes are just off by even a couple of millimeters, um, you'll have a very wavy looking sheet that you then have to clamp down tightly and it flares out these holes and then nothing is located properly. So I highly recommend not drilling this by hand unless you are absolutely certain that you can make a perfectly perpendicular hole to your material. It'll save you a lot of headaches in the future. Just do it on a drill press take the extra time to set it up and drill it properly, make sure everything's clamped tightly together on the press. Okay, so I just cut the first rear wing rib. Uh, this is the mate to the nose rib that I just uh, covered earlier. Uh, this one turned out very good. The flanges are all within a half a millimeter tolerance in the plans, so that's excellent. Um, Again, the plans require a one millimeter tolerance and there's a, a half a millimeter difference at the greatest spread, but pretty much they're all 18 millimeters. Uh, the metal does have a tendency to want to curve at the ends as you're trying to work the material around the radius. And sometimes that does account for the extra material. And one thing I mentioned in the previous video about drilling your form blocks and making sure that your bolt uh, tooling holes are perfectly perpendicular to your um, stock is um, the bolts will have a slight, if they're not drilled perp perpendicular, they'll have a slight angle to them relative to the uh, locating holes. And that becomes more and more pronounced as you stack more and more things together. So when you go to put the material in the forming block and the cutting bolt holes were slightly offset, I uh, said earlier that it would flange the hole slightly. And you can see here there's a bit of a divot in this hole the, because it had to stretch in order to accommodate these slightly slanted bolts. Now this isn't a problem really for this particular piece because that actually gets cut out and becomes a um, two and a half inch circle and then flanged all the way around it. So this is simply just a locating hole for the lightening hole that I have to drill into it. But on smaller parts where you don't have lightening holes you can actually end up tearing the metal at that where it starts to flare out, you can end up tearing the metal or cracking it and then you'd have to drill a larger hole around it. And sometimes on the smaller parts you don't simply have enough room for that. But overall this part turned out excellent. I'm not going to alter my cutting blocks at all for this piece. And uh, turned out to be a pretty good, pretty good rear rib. Again we still need lightning holes here, here, and here. And uh, they need to be flanged but I'm confident that that's not going to be much of a problem at this point. These turned out very nice and I'm very happy with them. So I'm going to go ahead and revise the cutting block and forming blocks for the nose rib and make another one and we'll come back in a little bit. Okay, so I wanted to show you the revisions that I made to the cutting block for the nose ribs. Now remember we had a slight taper up at the top here, that at the top of the rib that just uh, brought the flange in maybe a millimeter and a half to two millimeters 
uh, short after we formed it. And so essentially all I did was trace the old cutting template out and then take my curved straight edge like I showed you and added essentially just a, a, about a millimeter and a half to two millimeters and then tapered it back down to the start of where the flange tapers down to three millimeters. So if we pull this off, you can see the outline of the forming block, which of course is what we traced to determine the shape of the cutting block in the first place. Uh, we got a, about a three millimeter, <clears throat> it's actually about two millimeters sticking out over the edge here, so that when that forms around the nose of the forming block, it'll actually be a three millimeter flange, which is perfect, that's what we want. Um, there's a, the plans call for a crimp in this location, but they're really, if you taper, if you do a straight taper uh, down to the three millimeter around the radius here, there really is no need for it. However, there is uh, a crimp here that is required, otherwise you'll end up with a wavy flange. And you need it to follow the exact contour of the forming block. <clears throat> in addition, because I wasn't getting the depth of the crimps that I wanted when I formed the original rib, you can adjust that by hand, but it's a lot easier if when you're pounding the aluminum into this form block, it just forms the first time properly. So I think my original um, angle on these uh, crimp flutes was 30 degrees. So I have a spindle sander. I set the fence to a 30 degree bevel and I sand it up to this line. And this line is approximately three millimeters away from the very edge of where the start of the 1 8 radius is. And I, kind of while I was forming that aluminum into there, I realized that the aluminum just it needed, it needed to go deeper and closer to the radius. You do want some flat surface before uh, the metal starts to go into the flute because if you go right up to the edge of the radius, what you'll end up with is a uh, protrusion here at this radius. Uh, the metal wants to flute all the way up to the edge of where it bends and you don't want that. You want a, a nice flat surface before the flute starts, but it's a close call at three millimeters down from the edge of the radius. So I split the difference here. I just took the uh, flutes up about halfway from where I had my line to where the edge of the radius starts. And we'll see how that works. That's the only changes I made to the form blocks. Of course, there's a right-handed and a left-handed version of this form block, so I did it to both of them. So we'll go ahead and cut out a new nose rib using these templates with the router. I'll deburr it, and I'll form it, and we'll see how it turns out in a few minutes. Thanks. Okay, well, I'm back after uh, two more attempts at making this flange properly. Or, excuse me, the uh, nose rib with the uh, corrected flange. We talked about the other video, I cut new reliefs in the form blocks and I extended the cutting templates out a little bit to give me some more material. Well that turned out perfectly. When I cut the parts blank, uh, I could tell right away that it was going to be exactly the dimensions that I needed. I was going to get the flange right on every side. We ended up with uh, 17 and a half to 18 millimeters pretty much all the way around until it starts the taper for the notes. That matches on the back flange, uh, about within a half a millimeter of each other. The bottom flange, everything looks good. When I started making the first new nose rib. I developed a crack in this spot right here. Now for some reason on the original one, and I may alter the cutting template a little bit more, but some reason on the original one I don't have quite as steep of a pitch on that amount of material. So what you end up with is excess material here for some reason. I'm not really sure why I traced the original one. Uh, it's probably only off by maybe a half a millimeter. But I only needed a very minor crimp right here to get this radius uh, material to draw in. Whereas on this one, I needed a very aggressive crimp uh, to pull this, excuse me, to pull this around and to pull this in without having it bulge outward. Because you want it to sit flat and then have the nose skin wrap around it. I'm not really sure again what happened there. I think I may just sand a little bit off of the new cutting template to remove extra material here uh, because the one that I did initially, uh, here it is, <clears throat> the one I did initially, and you can see right here, there's a crack. I crimped it 
with a different set of crimping uh, pliers or fluting pliers. Uh, they put a sharp radius in the crimps and because there was just too much metal there and it was along an area, um, it cracked. It only cracked by about a couple of a millimeter or two and I actually split this further so that I wouldn't use it in the wing. It's just a scrap piece. I'll probably make another part out of it if there's enough material and if the tooling holes aren't in the right spot. But you can see it cracked a little bit and then I just finished it off to make sure that I would never use this part as a nose rib. Overall I'm very uh, happy with the secondary rib. It took a little teasing to get that crimp uh, where it needed to be. But everything else turned out quite well. There's a nice uh, fairly smooth radius. I'll, I'll, I'll finish that off uh, by hand a little bit. I'll, I'll shape that a little bit so it's more consistent with these. But these turned out pretty good uh, with the extra relief material taken away and how much deeper these went in. They formed very tightly around the radius which is what I wanted. You'll adjust these by hand after you pull it out of the form block because it does flex a little bit when you do move it. Like I said, it's kind of clamped in place so you have to force it away. And by doing that, or when you do that, that actually changes the geometry a little bit. So you have to play with it a little bit to get the get this to lay flat and get the radius that you want. Um, and that's about it for the nose rib. I just have to cut the lightning hole and flange that, but that's a simple operation using a fly cutter and then at my arbor press here and some flanging dies here that will put the four and a half inch hole in there with a nice flange all the way around so that's what we're looking for but more on that later thanks for watching